Uppity Unicorn here with a quick message. So I watched yesterday a recording of Papoose, the husband of Remy Ma. Um, he was basically giving an address in front of in front of a live audience, and he was saying how um, when he used to visit Remy Ma in uh, prison. He found that the visitor's room was empty. Whereas when he would visit, you know, the way he said it, his man's in them and, you know, Rikers or whatever male prison, the floor would be not only full, but full of females, as he put it. Black women in specific. And so he goes on to, and I added this to a video that I posted. Um, what was it called? Um, I don't know, but I, I will put it on um, my landing page as a welcome video so that you all can see it if you're not subscribed. Um, and I'll actually put it on both pages, never mind, so that you can actually watch his address. But basically, he was saying, I go to the women's prison, the, the visiting floor is empty. I go to the men's prison and not only is the floor full of visitors, but it's full of female visitors. The ratio of women is killing the ratio of men. He's like, we are not supporting our women the way our women are supporting us. Now, to you, that might be anecdotal, right? And please, African-American people, stop saying anecdotal. Please, it's, it's anic. It, it, it's a hard C. It's anecdotal. It's, look, I know that might be anecdotal evidence to you, but Remy was locked away for years. And year after year after year that Remy was away, when he would go to visit his wife, he would see the same thing. And year after year, when his mans and them were incarcerated, he would see the same thing. Visitors everywhere. Visitors primarily female, primarily black, flooding the floor. Now for you, this might be anecdotal, but to me, that is a whole, that is a whole data, scientific study, Pew report, like you can take that and cash that check at the bank. So why am I saying all of this? African-American women are divesting. They're waking up. They're realizing that we have an unrequited love when it comes to black men. Now, there's always a black man on my channel with or without a wrench, like, oh, what are you talking about? I love black women. And I'm just like, dude, I know you wouldn't be here if you didn't. But you're a liar if you say that you're not a unicorn. You visit up at a unicorn because deep calls out to deep. I'm a unicorn. You're a unicorn. That's why you're here. You know good and damn well as a black man. How many black men are willing to abandon black women for women of other races? How many black men are willing to create black babies that they don't take care of? But once the baby is biracial, now he wants to be a father. You have seen this. These are your boys. These are your brothers, your fathers, your uncles, your cousins, your friends, your colleagues, your coworkers. Like y'all know this and they will have 19 black kids and take care of one biracial kid or just not at all. And all the kids, mixed in all, are just not important. And they keep trying to equate this Cynthia G to the O'Shea Duke Jacksons, Kevin Samuels, and, and Tommy Sotomayor's and all these. Like, even still. And I can't say, I, I, I can't say that Cynthia hates black men. I can't. I can't. I can say she's dissatisfied. I can say she's bitter. I can say she's hypercritical. I can say she, say, say, say. But I can't say she hates them. What I see is a woman that is hurt as opposed to when I hear these other men, I see hatred. When I hear the man is fair, when I hear Kevin Samuels, when I hear all these different people, I hear hatred. I, I see blood sport. I see the will to kill. 
the mind, the bodies, the hearts, the spirits, the self-esteem, and in physical lives of black women, that's what I see every day. And black women have been seeing that for so long. And now that we're turning our backs, it's like, oh, well, you do it too. What's wrong with us dating interracially? You do it too. And I'm like, you drown us out in your interracial dating. We're just getting a foot. We really are. And you can talk about loving versus Virginia all the hell you want to. In reality, that Rappahannock woman, what, whatever black you saw, that Rappahannock indigenous woman, not an African-American. Now, we can have the argument about how many of us are Aborigine, how many of us were knocked off the dolls rolls, how many of us belong to five, the five civilized tribes. And I'll do it with you. I'm a Choctaw like any other Jackson is, like any other black formerly enslaved Jackson is. However, that was one woman and one man. The moment this interracial stuff became legal, the, these uh, miscegenation laws were removed and black men divested. And you know you did. You know you did. Now they will say, oh, I didn't. I have a black wife. How many of you have black wives? How many of you have black wives? And go ahead and ruin the statistics. I've listened to you do it and I have it memorized. Well, 80% of black men are married to black women. Mine, sir, 80% of black men are not even married. As a matter of fact, 80% of black men are single. Less than 30 something percent of African-American men in America are married right here, right now, bro. And of that percentage, 80% of them are married to black women. They marry out at three times the rate, marry out as in Latina, as in Asian, as in white, as in anything else. And it's like, oh, well, so-and-so has a white wife. Yeah, well, yeah, has a black wife. And it's like, yeah, well, you know, she's mixed her mama white. He didn't marry a woman who's black like him with two black parents. Oh, well, now you do. It matters. It matters. And when the women with two black parents are saying, hey, I've had enough. Even those of us who are paired, even those of us who are married to black men, we see this. Those of us who are in relationships with black men, we see this. And for you to say that you don't is like part of the reason we're writing you off. Because how do you not know what your homie is doing? You were sitting there in the locker room having these conversations, man. Tommy Loren, man, I, I wouldn't pull out, man. Even though she can say whatever racist thing about black people she wants to, but because, you know, she's a, you know, 30-something-year-old blonde. Oh, I wouldn't pull out. Oh, she could get it. Oh, okay. Uh, go see uh, Tariq Nasheed's, uh, what is this, Buck Breaking? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you go watch it. You, you, mm -hmm. you specifically. Well, 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 you have an attitude. Well, 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 you have it. Well, bye. That's the thing. So if there is, if we can just erect this wall of silence that the Manosphere used to talk about, I think that that would be most beneficial. Look, I just posted a video about like, there are so many black girls. This TikTok trend is viral where it's like, so on TikTok, it'll be like, oh, what's the disrespectful, the most disrespectful thing a teacher has ever said to you? What's the most disrespectful thing a parent has ever said to you? Black girls did their version. What's the most, and black boys did their version too. Black girls version. What's the most disrespectful thing a black guy has ever said to you? And I listened to those girls and literally what was said to them was said to me. I am from the Pacific Northwest, and these are girls from New York, from Louisiana, from Northeast, Southwest, Midwest, all over the place, and they're hearing the same thing. <laughs> hey, I bet that ain't your hair. <laughs> you know, black girls can't grow no hair. <laughs> you know, you pretty to be so dark. <laughs> well, you should be happy. I don't normally with black girls like that. <laughs> we all hear this stuff. We grow up with it. 
It's like being the tall girl in elementary school and in middle school who towers over every boy and gets humiliated by every boy who gets called the jolly green giant and you're so big and you know we're gonna call you Big Shirley like Cole's girlfriend from Martin and then when you're an adult and you don't want to date a short guy you're the problem. Tired. Tired. Black women don't even, I mean, in general, because I have seen individuals who do, but black women in general don't even want to hurt you. They, they're just done. R. Kelly, when a woman's fed up, huh? nothing you can do about it. It's like running out of luck and it's too late to talk about it. We don't even want to talk. But they come and, well, well, what are you talking about? I love black. You are so in the minority. Keep it real. What about your homeboys? Do they love black women or do they love black women only if they're mixed? Do they love black women or do they only love black women if they're perfect? They can have a blimp of a whale of an Asian or a Samoan or white or any other group of people, Mexicana. And, and then all of a sudden, if she's black, oh, but she better be a size four with a master's degree, speak three languages, be able to pat her head and rub her stomach at the same time with her finger on her nose. Like, damn, unequal standards. Your black girl got to be a baddie, but your Asian girl, she could be a halfy. She could be one fourth. Beyonce is singing resentment when she's like, I'll always remember feeling no good. Like I couldn't do it for you like your mistress could. I have to look at her eyes and see that she had half of me, but she ain't even half of me. And that desperate white bee will never be. Y'all don't listen to her sing live. You know why the audience starts screaming at her when she says that? Because it's relatable. We all go through it. Kanye West emblematic and they gonna keep calling and trying and you stay right girl but when he get on he leave you for a white girl like y'all know this stuff but when we say we're tired what do you mean well, well it's not me but you know it's your dude though you know it's your man's in them though so don't act like we're crazy don't act like we're making this up. Don't act like we ha we're having these narrow experience, these narrowly tailored experience that every, every black girl USA ain't having. This stuff happens in every black girl USA. And all we're saying is we're tired. I don't know about the hood rats who want to call you guys nakers and bullet bags and blah, 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 because I don't go to their channels. I don't hang out with them. I don't go to their homes. They're not my friends. I don't know nothing about that. But you know something about these people because this is who you rock with. It ain't nary a Negro who sits in a Tariq Nasheed live stream or, or podcast or radio broadcasting who can come to my channel and say, well, what are you talking about? I love black women. It ain't nary a one of you who watches a Tommy Sotomayor who watches a... And, and the thing is, Tommy is nice to me specifically. So what? Am I the rule or the exception to the rule? You think about it. Hell, he's nice to meet you, X, too. You think about it. Are we the rule? Are we how he treats all black women? Or are we the freaking exception to the rule? Are we unicorning out here? <sighs> the gaslighting is so pervasive in the pattern of gaslighting that black men do to black women is on par with what white people do to black people when they say what racism well it would go away if you would just stop talking about it you're creating a division with all these multicultural programs Well, sis, the problem will go away if y'all would just shut the fuck up. I mean, man, y'all are creating a division by holding the, the honest truth. Jonathan, y'all are creating a division. 
Do multicultural programs create a division or expose a division that is already there? Does affirmative action cause a division or, or expose a division that is already there? We wouldn't have needed it if the division wasn't already there. We wouldn't have needed it if the oppression wasn't already there, if the disenfranchisement wasn't already there. What did they call Malcolm? The, 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 the hate that hate created. And people wanted to pin certain things on him that he was saying. He was like, bro, I'm, I'm a product of my environment. Y'all made me. You mad? I'm a reflection of what you've done, white man. Isn't that what happened? And you understood it so well when Malcolm did it. But for some reason. When black women display the same resistance against black men, you're like, what are, what, what are you doing? You're as blind as these liberal white people. I don't know. You're as blind as these conservative white people. You're as blind as people outside of your group who are just like, what racism, Negro? I listen to Tupac. What racism? I like sports. I, I, I donated to Colin Powell. What racism? I elected, I voted for Barack Obama. What racism? I voted for Kamala. What do you mean we don't like black women? My wife is black. What do you mean we don't like black women? I love Jill Scott. What do you, what do you mean? Janae Aiko is my everything. What do you mean we don't like black women? That type of gaslighting, that type of nonsense, that kind of erasing an entire reality, that's not a conversation you can have when you have strands of gray in your hair. Like I am getting strands of gray in my hair. It is very apparent to me why y'all need these young girls. Why y'all need the greenness and the naivete of these young girls and why there's all this hitting the wall at 25. Because by the time we're 25 and our little neocortex, our, our, ne- our frontal cortex develops and we realize nonsense, you're mad. Because you want to be able to manipulate. You want to be able to gaslight. You want to be able to abuse. You want to be able not to have these difficult conversations. You want to be able to conquer somebody's brain instead of having a conversation that produces growth and goodness and camaraderie. I don't know how many times I said on my channel, how many times I said to a dirty, dusty Negro in the manosphere, like, I don't need to be your preference. I just want to be your sister. You know how many black men in the manosphere I said that to? I I mean, at least two or three. I don't got to be your preference. I get it. You're a colorist. You got a problem. I don't, I don't, I don't, hey, you don't like my color and I'm not attracted to colorists. I'm as put off as you are. However, we should still be able to build something together. We should still be able to figure out the community together. We should still be able to figure out the, and now I don't even want to, want to talk all that. Oh, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't have to be your preference. I just want to be your sister. I don't even want to be your sister anymore. I don't even want to be your sister anymore. Y'all love hurting black women and then get upset with how we react to the hurt. Y'all love talking to us like we're grown men and then expecting femininity. It, it it doesn't work. We're, we're a divided group of people on socioeconomic not, lines, along uh, political lines, along uh, now across genders. Y'all done told us we love white zaddy so much until we're like, all right, Goldman Sachs, haul it in. These men hate us, haul it in. I was watching a girl live last night with her real hair. Long, beautiful, silky, real hair. Black girl. This dude in the comment section said, well, that ain't her real texture. It's her real hair, but well, that ain't her. Yeah, she got it pressed. Hey, dummy. 
why girls get perms too. They get straighteners too. They get relaxers too. And you know what Asian girls do too. And you know what Samoan girls do too. They bleach. They change the texture. But for some reason, when it's a black woman, it's like, I, I, ha- I have to fix her. I have to break her. I have to tear her down. I have to strip away from her all of her currency. And then hate Goldman Sachs for giving us currency back. For watching us. For looking like, like the world is watching now. I saw the most racist confederate flag waving white man in his 30s on facebook make a post if you're a black woman come holler at me because you deserve better i just think black women deserve better than what black men are willing to give them he didn't say what you were capable of giving he said what you're willing to give now as i stare at the ten thousand dollar ring on my freaking hand given to me by black excellence the man in my life who has turned me into a stay-at-home girlfriend. There's exceptions to the freaking rule. There are some great mother effing black guys out there. Some of us are married to them. Some of us got kids by them. Some of us are stay-at-home girlfriends with them and don't got no marriage or no kids, but we're good as shit. We don't go to work. Because we have some wealthy, high value, wonderful black man in our lives. But you know what? Horns up, hoofs out, wings fly, unicorn. I'm not going to sit here and act like my life is everybody else's life. It's every other black woman's life. Especially when I've been in these positions with every other, I've been every other black girl USA. Where I sit down minding my business, going through my trapper keeper, zipping up my backpack, trying to find my favorite little clueless pen with all the fur and blue things on it. Hey, I bet that ain't your hair in front of the whole football team. Why would you do that to me at an all white institution when it's only 800 black people here and it's 30,000 students? Why would you do that? Why would you embarrass me like that? Even if it wasn't my hair. Then it would have been double embarrassment. Thank God something grows from my head. Or I might have been found suicidal and dead in my dorm room, dying from humiliation as a teenager with a non-developed prefrontal cortex who didn't know how to emotionally cope with it. Thank God I was hairy. For no reason. I said this to Mr. Uppity. He was like, man, that's odd. And I was like, it's odd to you. It is odd to you, unicorn. It's odd to you, demigod. He can't convince me he's not half God. He can't convince me he's not half divine. He can't, I mean, if I, if, 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 if God, if Allah approved of another religion, I, I would prostrate myself to the man that I'm with. He is my hope and dream of the black man that I stopped believing existed. And just when I lost complete faith, he showed up. But it doesn't mean all those other years of what I experienced with the black men in my family, the black men who were brought near to my family, the black men that I went to school with, that I went to work with. It doesn't mean that they don't exist. Mr. Uppity's ratio was how many black men have I met? Thousands. He's one up against, you know, three, four, five thousand. One. I think I know one man who was half of of Mr. Uppity and 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 and, that, and he's black, but he's a Somali. Eh. What do you want me to do? Yeah, you tired of Keisha's? Okay, divest. You tired of baby mamas that you create? Okay, divest. You don't like us? Go away. 
That's what you do when you're a grown adult and you can't work things out. If we can't come to common terms between us without getting called a bunch of B words, if we can't call into your show without being humiliated and cussed the hell out, if we can't have a decent conversation, you, you, you just walk away. Black men have been divested since the 1960s. And here black women come along doing the same and it's a crime. It's like, why even have the conversation with them when they know what they've done? They know what they've done. And you can talk Jenny Jones all day. You can talk Ricky Lake all day. You can talk Jerry Springer all day and what black women had to say. And, and this Oprah and that Gail. I don't like, I don't like Gail's ass and I... I didn't want to say a bad word. I don't like Gail and I have yet to forgive Oprah for what she did to Michael Jackson in Leaving Neverland. I don't think I will ever. Oprah feels like she's my aunt. She feels like family. My mom loves her. My family loves her. Grew up. I mean, the color purple was made the year that I was born. I literally grew up. Literally grew up being raised by the productions of this woman. The Color Purple, Beloved, her show, her master class, just everything. But even as a relative, if I saw her in the house, Thanksgiving, Christmas, I couldn't look at her for what she did to Michael. Oh, what? Uppity? You can't look at her for what she did to a black man? Absolutely. Wrong is wrong, whatever gender commits it. But I'm not going to sit here and pretend like the scales are even. They're freaking not. Black men have routinely sold black women down the river and we're just tired of being up shit creek without a paddle. And to... To gaslight us about this, to say that the, this is not happening, it's like it's like it's not even, it's, it's not even worth having the conversation after that. If you can't admit this, if you can't admit to colorism, if you can't admit to X, Y, and Z, then it's not worth talking to you. Then it's not worth the conversation. It's just do what you do, where you do it, over there. Keep your distance. Don't come over here gaslighting. Don't come over here lying. Don't come over here denying us our experiences. Something I know about the minority of... No, I'll save that for another time. I'll save that for another time. I'm up at you now.